Okay, this is the start of kinematics. Now, kinematics is the branch of physics that looks at the study of motion. And it's the study of motion without looking at the forces causing motion. So it's looking at an object's position, its velocity, and its acceleration as a function of time. It doesn't look at why it's moving yet. That's for later in physics. The first section is going to be on motion with constant velocity. All right, so the first main concept to grasp here is knowing what a vector quantity is and what a scalar quantity is. So here I have, at the origin here of this number line, I have two Pikachus. I got this red guy and I got this blue guy. I don't know his name, I'll call him Pika Blue. And they're both gonna move, okay? So Pika Blue here moves to x equals 10. So he went a distance of 10, he went 10 in the positive direction. The other guy, he's gonna go 10 in the negative direction. So they both went 10. That would be their scalar quantity. So a scalar just tells you how big something is. It only considers magnitude. A vector is gonna look at magnitude, but also where something went. It's gonna have a direction to it. So the blue guy, he went 10, but in the positive direction. The red guy, he went 10, but in the negative direction. Those would be their vector quantities. So here's the official definition here. A scalar is a quantity that only has magnitude. So like a quantity like your height would be a scalar. It's just a number. Um, a vector, a lot of quantities in physics are vectors. So like force, if you can apply a force in a certain direction or velocity. For example, down here, we have a car. On the left, that's just saying how fast it's going. It's going 25 kilometers per hour. That's its scalar quantity. Now for a vector quantity, okay, it's going 25 kilometers per hour, but where is it going? The vector is going to look at its direction, where it's going. So that's 25 kilometers per hour to the north. So here's these two again. They're both trying to get from A to B. We'll have Pika Blue go first. And he's got some issues. He doesn't really know what he's doing. He uh, traveled quite a big distance to go from A to B. Now we got this red guy. Let's see what he's going to do. All right, he goes straight there. So what just happened? They both traveled different distances, but they both have the same change in position. All right, the first vector versus scalar quantity to look at is distance versus displacement. So as it says there, distance is the length of something's path that it travels, where displacement is its change in position. So something travels all over the place, the length of its path is distance. So for example, if you walk somewhere and you have a step counter, that step counter is gonna tell your distance, how far you actually went, and that's a scalar quantity. Displacement is gonna look at, okay, you went somewhere, look at where you started, look at where you ended up, it takes that difference. It's your change in position. And in physics, it's denoted as this, delta x. This little triangle right here, is a delta in math that means change. X stands for position, because we're moving along the X axis. So X is position, delta X is change in position, which in physics is called displacement. And it's gonna be final position minus initial position. So that's distance versus displacement. Displacement is a vector, distance is a scalar. and they're back. So, they're both at x equals five. We're gonna start off here. There we go, Pika Blue. He's gonna go from x equals five to x equals zero. Now let's go with the red one. He's gonna go from x equals five to x equals 10. So what they just did, um, the red Pikachu there, went from x equals five to x equals 10. That was a distance of five. He moved in the positive direction, so his displacement is positive five. Displacement is a vector, so it has to have a direction. When you're talking about one dimensional motion along the x-axis, that direction is positive or negative. The blue Pikachu here, he went from five to zero. That was still a distance of five because a scalar doesn't have a sign to it. It doesn't matter which way you go for a scalar quantity, but he did go in the negative direction. So his displacement, which is a vector, 
which needs to have a direction, was negative 5. Now displacement is change in position. So position is denoted as x, because in this chapter we're looking at the x-axis, sort of along the number line. So here's an example of four different locations here. We have coffee shop, x equals negative 1, x equals 0, x equals 1, and x equals 3. So let's say we have Pikachu here. He starts at x equals 0. That's his initial position, x equals 0. And he's going to change positions. So he's going to go over here to Sun Coast High School, which is x equals 3. So his change in position, again, delta change in x position is 3. And that's called displacement. So this says displacement equals 3. Here's the other big set of vector quantity versus scalar quantity for this section. That's going to be velocity versus speed. So speed is a scalar, velocity is a vector. Um, and if you understand distance versus displacement, you can understand velocity versus speed. All speed is, it's how fast something's moving, but it's just distance over time. So that's your speed. How far you went and how long that took. Um, velocity, velocity is not really how fast something is going. It's how fast its position is changing. So it's displacement, change in position over change in time, which is what this formula down here says. Okay, and that's a vector quantity. It has a direction. So speed can't be negative. Velocity can be. Also, something can move really fast. I can have this, um, I don't know what this guy's name is, Joker Baby Yoda. So he can go really fast, but end up where he started, and his velocity would be zero because he didn't change position. So that's speed. Speed is how fast something is moving. Velocity is change in position over change in time. So here's the setup. I have a meter stick right here. There's a little track here, and there's gonna be a battery-powered car that's gonna go across the track. Um, I'm saying this direction right here to the right is the positive direction. So when the car travels to the right, that means its velocity is positive, it's going in the positive direction. And it went a distance of one meter, and the time down here was five seconds. So to find its speed, and its velocity in this case, if something only moves in the positive direction, its speed and velocity are the same number here. So velocity is change in position over change in time, and it went positive one meters in five seconds. So from that, we have its velocity is one over five, which is 0 0.2 meters per second. Now I'm gonna take the same car to the right is still the positive direction. The car is still the same exact car, so it travels just as fast. It still has a speed of 0.2 meters per second. But here, this direction to the right is positive, and the car is traveling to the left. This means it's traveling in the negative direction, because I define the opposite direction as positive. So its velocity is negative, and it's negative 0.2 meters per second. And this down here is true, which is that if you're given a velocity and it's negative, to find the speed, it's just the absolute value of velocity. Example A, we have Pikachu, he's at x equals 0, and it says he's going to travel to x equals 8 in a span of 2 seconds. So he's going to go from 0. He's going to travel positive 8 in 2 seconds. After that, he's going to travel to x equals 2. So he's going from x equals 8 to x equals 2. So here he went negative 6. So for the first 2 seconds, he had a distance of 8, a displacement of 8. For the next 2 seconds, he had a distance of 6, a displacement of negative 6. In the total time, his displacement is 2. He started at 0 here, he ended at 2, so his displacement for the entire motion is 2, which is one of the answers here. 
So question, calculate is distance, displacement, speed, and velocity. All right, so distance. Distance doesn't care about which way you're going. So he went eight, then he went six. The entire length of his path to go from here and then back to here, that is eight plus six. Distance is a scalar, it does not care about direction. So he went a distance of 14. You can see this here are meters. Now his displacement, yes, his distance was 14, but at the beginning, he was at x equals two. At the end of the motion, hold on, rewind for a second. At the beginning, he's at x equals zero. Then he's at x equals two. His change in position, which looks like this, displacement, this means final position, position sub f minus initial position. Well, that's gonna be two minus zero. So his displacement is two. Okay, then for speed. So speed is gonna be distance over time. So he traveled a distance of 14 meters in a span of four seconds. So that's 14 over four, which is seven over two. So that's 3.5 meters per second. That's his speed. Now for velocity, velocity is gonna be displacement over time. A change in position over change in time. So his displacement is two, the time is four. So two over four, so his velocity is one half meters per second. All right, and that's example A. And sort of two formulas we sort of just looked at, coming down here. Um, so this one we were given distance, sort of, then we were asked to find speed. If you're given speed, you wanna find distance, the formula for that. Distance is gonna be speed times time. Using this delta here, that means change in time. So this says distance equals speed times time. Actually, I write that out. Okay. Um, use that for, um, formula occasionally. The more common one is this one right here, finding displacement from velocity. Now this formula is only true in one of two cases. Constant velocity, that means the velocity is never changing. So let's say you're driving, and you're always going 40 kilometers per hour, per hour. You can use this because you have a constant velocity. The other one where you can use this is average velocity. That's it. That means the velocity is changing as you're moving, but you know over the course of the entire motion, you know what the velocity is. So this equation, which again, only works for these two cases. There's gonna be times later on in this chapter where you can't use this. Displacement, which is delta x change in position, equals velocity times change in time. And you can also write it like this if you're talking about average velocity. Okay, so displacement equals velocity times time. Okay, this next thing is not really a new formula. I'll show it in a minute. So all this is saying is find the new position if an object is moving with constant velocity. So this formula is pretty self-explanatory. It looks like this. Okay, so what does this mean? This means final position equals initial position plus change in position. And to sort of write it out for what we're gonna do, final position equals initial position plus change in position, but that's gonna be velocity times time. We'll go ahead and look at that right now. Here's look at the formula that I just wrote. So it says here, final position equals initial position plus change in position. Um, now in physics, we use a lot of subscripts. So this is an X for position. This is a subscript. And this is an F for final. So we would read this as X sub F equals X sub I plus delta X. So 
Pretty intuitive formula, final position equals initial position plus the change in position. And then we can take this one step further by using the formula for displacement because it's velocity times time. We get this formula down here. So just to look at this formula up here in action, I have Pikachu here at x equals negative 1. And he's going to travel to x equals 3. And the formula looks like this. His final position is 3. His initial position was negative 1 because he was here. And he traveled a displacement of 4 because he went a distance of 4. And it was in the positive direction, so his displacement was positive. Okay, I'm going to wrap up here with example B. This is about, you got Pikachu and you got Eevee. They're both um, moving. One's going positive, one's going negative. The question is basically to find out how far apart they are. So we're going to find the final position of each of them after the motion that is described in the problem. So I'm going to look at them separately first. I'll start with um, Pikachu. So I'll look at his motion. All right, his initial position Initial position, that's what that means, is going to be x equals 2. And we're given that he has a constant velocity of positive 2. So he's moving this way with a velocity of positive 2. And he's doing that for 2 seconds. So I'm going to find this final position. So again, it's using this formula here, which says final position equals initial position plus velocity times time. So in this case, that's going to be 2, which is where he started, plus his velocity, which is 2, right, units, meters per second. And the time span here is 2 seconds. So this is 2 plus 2 times 2. So that's going to be 2 plus 4, so that is 6. So his final position is going to be x equals 6. Now for the other guy. We got Eevee. His initial position is going to be negative 2. All right. And he's going to move in the negative direction. He's going to have a velocity. Remember, velocity is a vector, and it's negative, so he's going in the negative direction of negative 4. And again, we're going to find his final position. So we have negative 2. His velocity is negative 4. And he's doing that for 2 seconds. So negative 2, negative 4 times 2 is negative 8. So his new position is going to be negative 10 meters. And the question is, how far apart are they? Well, Pikachu is going to be over here at x equals 6. Eevee's going to be way over here somewhere at x equals negative 10, which is negative 10. And their final distance apart is going to be then 16. And that's the answer.